anyway, welcome and hope everybody had some uh, great holidays. So we'll go ahead and call the uh, meeting to order. Uh, I guess you're taking care of the roll call there. Uh, and we'll wait for you to get done and uh, do the introduction on Ronnie. Is that one? One of you is going to do that? The introduction of Ronnie? Yes, I can do that. Okay. Uh, Ronnie Manus is our new senior services manager. Um, we were thinking that Ronnie wasn't going to be able to start until actually next Monday. And Ronnie called me and said, what do you think about the 27th of December? And I was like, no, we don't want you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. so, yeah. so Ronnie was kind enough to, to start on the 27th. And, has uh, hit the ground running. And uh, Ronnie, do you want to say anything? Yeah, um, very excited to be here. We've had great support um, from the entire team, the entire team here, just to make sure that I, I get settled in. I, you know, and I'm learning a lot of logistics to my role, um, how we operate here as, as a team, as a facility. And so um, a lot of learning, uh, a lot of learning, <laughs> a lot of processing, a lot of digesting. and. Uh, very thankful for the team I have in the learning process for sure. So uh, I am very thankful that I have been able to start earlier than I anticipated and I'm um, January 9th date allows me to um, just get a feel uh, of what it is we're doing here and, and how I could best support and I was really itching for that one. So January 9th seemed a long ways away and I'm glad I was able to get in before that. So very excited to be here. Uh, very thankful very thankful for this opportunity, and I look forward to working with um, with, with you as a, as a board to, to support our community. So, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Can we also go uh, around? I was going to suggest, I know you won't try to remember on this. Well, we probably can. He's got number and all of it, but, or most of us. <laughs> but if we can go around and introduce ourselves. Let me start. I'm Beth Bowles, and I'm glad to be here with all of you. This is my first board meeting. And uh, I've been a peer volunteer. Um, I guess we're called peer support volunteers. Um, it used to be peer counseling. And I've been in that role for about three years. And um, I just am here because it was presented and I decided it was something I could do. So I hope I'm. I'm Julie Karen. Um, I'm in my second three-year term on the board, so I'm the last of the old guys. Um, and I um, volunteer here at the Senior Center as resource manager um, and welcome. And Glad you're here, Ronnie. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Julie Hauser. I um, have been on the board for two years. I'm starting my third year. Um, I also um, am with the Long Island Symphony Guild. Um, I'm the president of that. Okay, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got involved. Um, I'm a real estate agent as well, but I got involved just because of the fact that. Um, you know, my mom is a, is a senior, and I am now considered a senior at 55 and represent the youngest, you know, level of seniors in our community. And I thought it would be important to sort of figure out how we can create a senior center that uh, appeals to the younger generation and the older generations of the seniors. So that's why I'm here. Uh, hi, Ronnie. I am Marsha Martin. I am the council, city council liaison uh, to this board, so I don't get a vote, so you won't be offended when I <laughs> abstain from <laughs> everything, <laughs> except I never keep my mouth shut, so I can't <laughs> as much as, as anyone else on the board. And I just want you to know that whenever I talk about the senior center and this board, I always say, thank you. I always say that this is the most effective board that I have ever sat on as liaison um, and also the most effective institution 
in the city in terms of fulfilling its mission. So you and me have uh, high bar to keep up with it. And welcome. I'm so sorry. I'm Uh, Mark Quintana, we met, I guess, and uh, hold on. Uh, I've been on the board for, this is starting my fifth year now, and uh, worked for the school district, retired. Mm -hmm. I'm Dave Drummond, uh, where are you from? Born and raised, um, Denver, South Denver. South Denver? Yeah, so oh, okay. Denver, no, Colorado native. I'm always, always interested. Right. <laughs> um, I am probably the oldest one on the board, I think. I, I bet on it. That, that gives me no particular claim, I guess, but I've been retired a long time. Um, my particular interest is uh, on this board are sustainability issues. I'm the liaison to the uh, sustainability coalition. And I also attend, I'm not a member. I'm not a voting member on anything, but I also attend a sustainability advisory board to try to keep myself up to date to the, to the extent uh, of uh, what kinds of issues are going on with those groups that uh, would impact seniors uh, in the community. And so I try to report that back. And uh, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm Ruth Ellis. This is my second year. And I have learned so much since I have been on this board about what goes on in Boulder County and services available to adults. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad to be here. I have senior family members who don't live in Boulder County. And what a hassle it is to get services for them. So I have really, really appreciated everything that we've done here. And the senior center has just been a life bridge for me when I moved here. Um, you will find out that one of my um, less than positive things to say about what goes on is the registration process for classes and programs here. It's really difficult to use our registration system. But more about that later. Well, it's nice to meet all of you. Oh. Yeah. I also want to introduce Christina Pacheco. Christina has been with the city for many years, and, but was just recently <coughs> named the Director of Human Services. Christina will be overseeing senior services as a part of her duties. So, Christina, Thank, you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here and excited that work closely with Ronnie and your team. And, uh, just excited to be taking on this new new challenge. So. Welcome. Thank you. Well, do you, we talked about you at the Latina Coalition. Hopefully oh, we did. did. Hopefully yeah. it was good. No, you know, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know that board. Yeah. Thank it you. was all good. We, thank you. Thank you. We needed to hear that. Okay. Election of chair. Uh, anybody would like to nominate some someone for that position? Any? Who is the current chair? Uh, she yeah. was, she was to cut off the board at the end of December. Oh, and she ended her term and didn't re reelect. Oh, okay. So. Julie, would you consider it? Oh, yeah. Um. I don't, I don't think I can. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I just feel like I have too much going on already with work and my other um, presidency. And I feel that's kind of one of my concerns too. Uh, I don't know if either one of you are interested. <laughs> Dave, we do have a, a, I do a lot of, <coughs> do a good job of keeping us awake. Away keeping us alert uh, about what's going on. You're good at uh, uh, checking in with me and researching things, etc. So I just think you'll be great also. Uh, Dave or Ruth, if you want. What's that? Either one of you two. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it? Yeah. I, I 
Okay. Is there anyone that would volunteer? Yeah, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to talk them into it. We're as we go around. I, I nominate <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> that is so unfair. Because she already nominated you. Are you getting even? <laughs> She, Sheila's out of the country. Right. So she had sent that email. Okay. Oh gosh. You know, I I said that I was absolutely not going to do that. Uh, I got I got a full plate. I really do. Um, let me ask. Uh, what does the president do other than conduct meetings? They they also meet with staff to set the agenda. And uh, we generally, the only other thing outside of this meeting, and I don't know what Ronnie will do in the future, but uh, Susan and I, the last couple of months, would meet and have a free conversation about the agenda. But beyond that, it, it, it really isn't a lot uh, uh, outside of running the meeting. And I, and I will be around as long as whoever wants to do that to support uh, them in, in starting to feel more comfortable and, and then Ronnie will take over that uh, as he feels comfortable. Well, let me make a campaign speech. <laughs> well, I think you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to convince him. <laughs> uh, Yeah, this, this is not going the way I figured this morning. Um, see, most boards that I've, I've been on a lot of boards and committees and stuff over the years. Uh, I, this, I, what I'd like to see in a board is something that uh, has different projects that they grab hold to, grab onto, and they work on and make recommendations and are implemented. Now, this is an advisory board, I understand that. We could make advice could give advice all day long and there's no particular reason you have to follow it. But on the other hand, I do think that for a board to be valuable, they need, they need to make recommendations to the management that, that are worthwhile and that, um, that will be followed, you know. And so if I did that, I'd be, I'd, I'd be approaching it from that uh, perspective, not just, you know, conducting a meeting. And uh, I, I do have some limits on my time. I just, uh, I'm just blabbering now, but I just volunteered. I was telling Janine a little earlier, I just volunteered for uh, uh, to be the architectural, be on the architectural committee for our HOA, which I don't particularly care about that, except uh, we can, uh, I, I want to use that as a platform to develop some sustain sustainability issues within the HOA. And maybe that could grow into a sustainability issue, which I see is taking a lot of time. So that's why, uh, <laughs> that's why I brush my teeth. <laughs> uh, so well, I'll nominate uh, Dave for president. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to come to Dave's rescue and say, you know, it's not horrendous to me time-consuming and yeah. truly for those who don't know I did it for a couple of years and what I know about myself is that I am fairly straightforward and that people with better skills that <laughs> management skills would probably be better in this position which Dave is absolutely qualified for in every way. But I also understand, because we were neighbors and we're friends, and I brought him into this, so I'm trying to save him from being talked into doing something that he really is limited in time and may not want to do. And I, and I personally, I feel like uh, that should be a consideration because uh, everybody feels guilty when they say no, you know. And I and I just 
because I'm an outspoken person, I'm going to say that. You weren't offering yourself up. Oh, you were just I, saying it's okay for him to say no. Brian, do you remember when I did the offering? Um, Marcia, you remember when I? I, knew, yeah, I thought you did a great yes, job, and I. I was surprised. I thought the only reason you weren't under discussion was because you'd already done your time. Well, I had done my time, but I, I just feel like I'm so outspoken that that this board needs a little gentler soul than me. No. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> so I would I would like to say something to both of you then, all right? Because Dave, I think you put your um, hammer right on the nail where the this board is the weakest. You know, I just said what a great board I think this is, and the reason I think it's great is because you have all this outreach into other related functions in the county and and you know that's wonderful that you bring back all of that know-how in the weak point is that the board has recommended very little to the council and I just want to say that at least in my book that is one of the best ways to move council is to have an advisory board make an actual concrete recommendation whether it's a policy change or um, an operational change, which we really don't control, but it still, you know, makes the point. Um, so I would love to see Dave do that. I also thought, Janine, that you were a really strong president and did a great job. Thank you. Um, so well, well, vote with a clear conscience, guys, but either of these two people would be yeah, I agree. Well, uh, is there anybody that wants a <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> and Dave, I would support you in that effort in any way I could. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I I would too. I'll do whatever you want to do. Okay. So I'll even go to city council meetings. All right. So do we do we need a second for that motion? Okay, I motion Dave's uh second it. All in favor? Right. Okay, uh, now uh, here, the next thing on the agenda All is right. the uh, vice president. All right. Um, See, so you've already agreed to be vice chair, right? You'll be vice chair? Well, I've been that, but I'll, if, if no one else is interested, uh, I think okay. I'll do it. Uh, all so right, I'll, I'll, I'll entertain a motion for vice, <laughs> for vice chair. You need a second for that? No, it's uh, done. we don't have a motion yet. So, oh, okay. Oh. Well, if there's no, um, my, my uh, Robert's Rules of Order are a little rusty, but uh, if, uh, if you're volunteering to be vice chair, uh, so would someone make a motion that we uh, elect? Uh, I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay. I'll second. Second? All right. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We need to get a um, election of the secretary. Uh, all right. Uh, does anybody want to be secretary? Does anybody want to make a motion to be secretary? It's a tough job. Well, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth. Uh, uh, who's I, I, nominate, I nominate Ruth. Then. All right. Uh, Is there a second? Second. There all right. A second. Uh, Ruth has a second. Okay. And so, you can start taking notes right now. I got a pen. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like All right. Jeff's doing a good job uh, over here. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so far, so, yeah. any discussion of the uh, nomination for secretary? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Can I, can I ask who made the motion? And I made second? the motion. Uh, the Fuley made the motion. And a second. And the second was, uh, who was the second? On who? Uh, on the vice yeah, president? On, yeah. on the secretary. Oh, oh Jenny. Okay. So it's better. Right. Still better. Okay, so we got our new board. Uh, recognize the new board member, and that would be Beth. And would, anything further you'd like to say, Beth? 
Uh, you've already introduced yourself, so we're glad to have you. I'm glad I didn't vol volunteer for anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a matter of time. Yeah, I thought you were going to yeah, say yeah. something yeah. at one point. <laughs> That's no. good. You still have an opportunity to make No, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I know what it's like to have that happen to you. All right. Introductions and welcome. I guess we've done all of that. Is that right? Public to be uh, invited to be heard three minutes to uh, a person. There's only public here to be heard. Hearing none. Uh, We'll go to the old business, which is discussion of library, recreation, and culture tax proposal, outreach, and communication. We, we need to do the minutes. Oh, sorry, where's the minutes? Number four. Oh, I missed them, sorry. Uh, and I apologize, Prudence sent those in a different format this time, so if you're not comfortable approving them that way, I can, I will take and put them in the normal uh, format if, if you're more comfortable. What's the normal um, format? Geez, What's I, the words out? Yeah, words words paragraph by paragraph. Sort of. I really liked this. <laughs> it was very clear. It so was nice. concise, yeah. laid yeah. out. I could glean it yes. quickly. It wasn't mm -hmm. just really me. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Okay. I, I don't mind the format. I like a little more detail. It was a quick breeze. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but format's fine. All right. Uh, any corrections or additions to the minutes? Anybody make a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion. Julie? Second. A second? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The minutes are approved without correction. All right. Now we can go to old business. Okay. On to the discussion. Would that be you? Uh, do you want to lead this, Marsha, sure. or do you want me to? Uh, I can't see the agenda, oh. and I didn't. So, oh, at last month's meeting, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, there's a bunch of stuff about that. Um, I'd like to start by summarizing that the, the, council, the council presented a list of uh, public amenities that there's no money to invest in them now, and the council wants to consider a ballot question for the fall that will um, fund some of these things. It could be one ballot question or two ballot questions because Colorado has a log rolling statute, which means that unrelated things can't be in the same funding ballot question. So we can't put the library and the recreation center together. Um, there are some, uh, you know, the definition of related is somewhat squishy. So uh, I have just, for example, been having conversations. Well, well, you know, there the Boulder Public Library, for example, has not a huge theater, but a fairly substantial mm -hmm. theater. So it might be that the library and theater, as they're both culture and knowledge, could be lumped into one ballot question, and then the sum or all of the recreational you know, uh, things could be lumped into another one, so you could have, in, this, in essence, uh, mind and body, as it were, as, as two ballot questions. Um, the other thing that, that, that you would want to know is that to fund everything on that list, both uh, you know the a reasonable amount of capital investment and um, and uh, enough tax that would continue to provide operational support uh, would be a quarter of a billion dollars of of funded stuff, uh, and that is. is depending on how it's broken down, that's significant tax increases. And um, uh, Jeff probably, I bet you have the numbers with you. <laughs> yeah, and so when, if anybody wants to know, we'll go into them. Um, so there's, there's a number of approaches that can be taken. Um, one is to prioritize things off the list. Uh, another is to 
do some this year and some next year or two years from now. Um, and uh, then the other thing that's being considered is, you know, what we really want is a progressive tax, you know, like income taxes used to be in the, in the, you know, the Eisenhower era where, you know, people who were very, had very high incomes paid a lot and people who had low incomes paid very little. Our taxation system, our federal taxation system isn't so much like that anymore. Um, but uh, all the tool tools in our toolbox are uh, in our uh, sales taxes and property taxes. Well, property taxes tend to be progressive and that, you know, if you have more money, you probably have a house with a higher value. Um, sales taxes are truly regressive. They fall the hardest on the poor. Um, but there are kind of exceptions to that rule on, on on both sides. So, for example, um, Longmont has visitors and hopes to have more visitors. And you know, some of these some of these things are um, uh, meant to attract more visitors from outside the city limits. And so that means sales taxes are good because uh, people who aren't from Longmont pay them. Uh, and in fact, the data that we have it says that that uh, we already, because of our big box stores, that's why Longmont didn't suffer during the pandemic in terms of city revenue, because um, we had a huge draw from outside the area, people coming to, to shop in our big box stores, and now we're about to get a, a Costco opening this spring, uh, which will be right in the middle of that draw area, and it's very accessible to drive to from almost anywhere. So that tends to lead things towards sales taxes because it means that all those other guys are paying for it. So you know, one of the things that we're looking at is 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 whether to uh, the the proportion of this that would be funded by a mill levy, and the proportion of it that would be funded by sales tax, um, and then uh, I guess that's that's the background that that I'd like to lay, and, and um, you know, that, again, it falls into several big categories. There's, um, there is a branch library. There is um, a number of recreational things, um, because we, we probably should have at least one more and probably two more rec centers the size of the one that we have. Um, Dry Creek Park has been hanging fire forever, and it was the most concretely promised locale for a new rec center. Um, and then all of our swimming pools are falling apart, so we need, you know, to upgrade or replace at least Centennial Pool, which is really falling apart. And um, and then we have some opportunities for um, new outdoor amenities. Uh, on on city owned land. So I think those are the three categories. Some are, oh, oh and a Center for the Performing Arts, mm -hmm. um, which is near and dear to my heart, by the way, just so that you'll know that I'm prejudiced on this, um, because I think it's a matter of social equity. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are um, working age and have children and are earning good money and each parent has either zero or one job, then you can go down to the Denver Center of Performing Arts or Fiddler's Green or whatever your you know genre is, basically any time you want, mm -hmm. and you can have your kids in you know regional hockey leagues or regional swim teams as much as you want because you know you don't have any extra stuff to do, so you can cart your kids all around. You can indulge your own personal taste for culture, but for um, middle class and down, and also for seniors, just because it's so difficult to attend those things, the only way to go there is, is driving. Parking is horrible, whether it's Matthew Auditorium in Boulder, or Denver Center for Performing Arts, or the amphitheaters, you know, are just a major investment of a day to get there. 
So except for the privileged, the extraordinarily abled, um, those aren't available to us. But for our children and our, our you know, our, and our seniors, they'd be so much more accessible if they were here. So that, you know, that's my argument for <laughs> that, because it doesn't really, you know, doesn't necessarily fit with the others, although I'm, you know, it could kind of get in with a library. Um, but the, and, and that's really true of all these amenities. Uh, Longmont got behind because of the flood. We had to put all our efforts into just putting ourselves back together. It's been a decade and we're finally on the very last leg of that with the bond issue that just passed last, uh, last election. Um, and, and so this is where we start catching up. So it's a really important question and and I have a question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, it's really the information you shared was really interesting. Um, how does it relate to the senior advisory board? Well, um, as Dan just pointed out, um, uh, the board has the capability, but it has not necessarily used that much to make re recommendations to council. Um, for these facilities? Yeah, for, for the, in particular for the prioritization. And then the other thing is that, begin, and correct me if I'm wrong on the timeline here, Jeff, but usually um, this kind of outreach begins around Cinco de Mayo, um, being the first outdoor public event that we have. The city will begin an outreach effort talking to the people, holding focus groups, holding lotteries at, at, at the outdoor events. Um, I hope we do a lot more than we have in, in the past in, in terms of you know, really intelligent outreach and educating people. But anyway, it starts this spring. And so what we want to do is, is understand what the public's priorities are and what would be the most used and what they miss the most and and where the inequities really lie and and so as as a, a group that among other things represents a, a demographic stratum of this community this the senior population excuse me Julie um, I wave my arms when I'm getting passionate um, <laughs> Uh, you know, one of your roles is to is to tell us what you think and why. <clears throat> so the discussion is first, what do we think about this, and second, what are we going to do about it? And and that can be from what kind of outreach can we do to our demographic? To um, do we want to move the needle? Do we want to raise awareness? Of this process and and we try to move the needle in terms of what we think would be the most important thing to support our community so if, if that does that answer your question somewhat we've got, that, a, got can, a blank can I slate jump here. in there yeah to, somewhat so in addition to the rec center there would be programming space specific to seniors the senior center will always be the hub but one of the challenges that we have here is not enough space. And so what we have proposed is adding uh, multiple meeting or programming space so that um, we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. It would also serve another area of the community. And then um, again, it wouldn't be another senior center, but it would be programming space like you have here in the, in the senior center right now with B and E and, and the room we're in so that some things could happen there uh, as well as here. Yeah. So that, that's, I think that answered, hopefully that answered your question of what, what does the senior services get out of this? Janine? Well, I know I can speak for, for the for the community that I choose to represent on this board. And all of these things I agree are needed. Mm -hmm. That's I, also, I also am aware of the fact 
that people, especially in the community that I represent, are overwhelmed right now with trying to purchase food, number yeah. one, pay their utility bills, that is two and a half times what it was last month, this month, and gas, gas and just expenses. And if you are going to reach out to the community to pass taxes and bonds for things that you please focus on one thing at a time because my community is overwhelmed with affording to live day by day. And I would like that to be a consideration, and it would be because my is this a vote? My right. community <laughs> also votes. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, yeah, and that's that's right. You know, if, if if we can't, but if we could put all quarter of a billion dollars worth of debt, I guarantee <clears throat> you, it would just fail. No one would vote mm -hmm. for that. Um, so. You know, all of those things. So so Janine started out exactly right. That's one viewpoint. And it's certainly, like, everybody knows we can't pass a quarter of a billion in new debt. We're just not that much of a city right now. And um, so the, everybody gets an opinion, and everybody gets a, you know, we can define a strategy about how to provide the most informed opinion for our demographic. Right. Yeah. Um, and, oh, excuse me, um, and so that's the discussion, and I'm going to start keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> I think, you know, I think that that, 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 considering all of it, everything that's been spoken here, is that really what our, I think our duty is as a, as a board, is to decide what, what piece of that is the most important for the senior community, and how do we present that to the city council. Good point. Right? And, and. And then see if we can, like you said, you know, push the the city council to, to see our point of view and maybe raise the bar and, and get things done for us. Yeah. Very good point. Any other questions for Marsha? I just wanted to mention that you know um, that his his name completely escaped me. The the cultural facility question has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. the sculptor plastic surgeon he was very involved Sch Schmidt thank you um, he and his the people that uh, were trying to um, raise money and get um, I don't know if they did a study or not back then that was a while back quite a while back um, and there wasn't the support that was needed and, and I think do you know about the history of that Marcia I don't know all of the history. I think it's I, really important to, yes, to research I, that. Yeah, what I do know is is that in the last, well, it, it was finished about the time we locked down for the pandemic. There was a big feasibility study that was right. funded by a combination of the city visit Longmont, the economic development, the downtown development, and the arts community for a bigger chunk than anybody else. But so that study was a partnership funding, and um, I have that. Um, I can make sure that everybody has a link to it. Um, but uh, you know, it, it 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 can be read. So yeah, it's it, it, that is is a question of of um, it's a question of whether the public would vote for it. Um, now, we never know what the public is going to do. We had a really beautiful, um, large-scale uh, uh, rec center with pool, uh, pool, and ice. pool and ice. And for a number of reasons, it failed on the ballot measure. It was all by itself, just that, just one rec center. And what we kind of found out was that, first of all, a lot of people voted no because the city wouldn't promise what neighborhood it would be in. A lot of people voted no because the way it was messaged made people think that it was only 
for the sports teams and the high schools and everything else, and it wasn't a public rec center, which was false, completely false. But a lot of people believed that, and a lot of people still believe that. Um, and and then uh, I think a lot of people that don't want growth in the city leveraged all that and and actively opposed building the thing at all. So uh, it failed, and that kind of you know it, it was kind of a surprise because usually you think people really want um, physical recreation facilities. So um, yeah, it's. It's a hard problem. <clears throat> to follow up on Julie's point, timeline, you probably said one, I didn't get it, but what are we talking about as far as getting some sort of recommendation to the council? Well, you know, to our slice of the population, this is what they get. Yeah, I, I didn't really give a very close timeline. It would go like this. Um, uh, the city outreach does start in about spring, usually, um, and uh, it, we could probably co come forth with a recommendation from this board any time over the summer. Does that feel right to you, Jeff? Yeah, maybe um, early summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, because um, you know, I, I hope the city isn't going to have its thumb on the scale. I mean, I want a thumb on the scale, but that's me. That's not the city. Um, so, uh, so I hope that, that the city's outreach will not necessarily be influenced by the recommendation of this board, but the council's decision, which will be made in August, is that right? Because we have to refer the ballot measure. I think that might have to happen in July, because I think in August you have to set what is on the ballot in November. Okay. All right, we should, uh, yeah, I, I thought we, I thought we referred things in August before, um, because it's the end of August, yeah. so I don't know, um, but yeah, we don't have a whole lot of time, so this would be, this would be the board's first project if we decided to do some outreach work, um, and, and uh, either I or Jeff can actually verify what the preferred yeah. timeline is. Now, is, is that, would it be helpful for the for this advisory board for the senior center since the people that participate in the programs here are the most active people that would possibly utilize mm -hmm. all of these things so i don't think it would entail a lot to have a survey from now until with our participants just a simple survey and maybe pass them out in classes, maybe, you know, um, to find out what they feel. But, uh, that would be a good representative group. Who put the monthly in-person surveys on the agenda? That, that was me okay. based on last month's conversation. Okay. okay, I was just thinking and follow up on those points. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I will, I I will, so your, this survey is different. That, yeah. That's on the agenda than what you're. I want our about. audience yeah. to be able to yeah. give us an indication, not just the board, but our audience. Yeah, I, I would agree. And and <clears throat> the city marketing team is working on that uh, survey so that what you as a board and the users of the senior center will get the same survey as what is provided to the rest of the community. Well. Except that the, the city's marketing team survey does not have to be the only survey. Right. right. So, so if, um, if we had a, you know, decided that a, a different outreach method um, or uh, you know, the way of looking, um, you know, work through meals on wheels because, um, you know, we, we need to look at at unserved and underserved communities as well as the active. I mean, mm -hmm. being active in your 70s and 80s is a privilege all its own. And not but all you have of to us be active, active to utilize all of those proposals. Well, but yes and no, depending on how the, the because every, every amenity is a service. So it could be designed to involve people, right. just like the senior center is. 
And I think that's sort of the point is that maybe there would be more people who would utilize the space if it was built to accommodate them and it was there. Like if like maybe because the senior center is so far away from North North um, Longmont, right? That people don't want to take the trek in to get there. Right? So if we had something that was closer to them, maybe they would utilize Transportation it. Transportation is the issue. It's so terrible, people yeah. People want to go out. Yeah. Art? I, you, you know, know. The, the thing that's very important is the education and the informing of people. And, you know, we're, we're I, I don't feel that everybody is being, and I, there's no way you can inform everybody, but I think we need to, let people know what's going on and you know we do the the, the uh, technology we use the news media and stuff like that but i was i guess I'm, I'm looking at one thing that the majority of the people in the city of brighton get is a utility bill correct mm -hmm. and i was just wondering and i don't know if we could recommend it or if that would be something that would be educational or not but to that we have a page added to the the mayor's notes and the other activities going on that would deal specifically with, you know, something like this. Uh, I don't know if that is possible or I don't know what it takes or who decides what's going to go on that, what do you call that? The city line. Yeah, city line. Yeah, city line. Or a link. Um, and, and, and the course. answer is, by the way, that, uh, that I think that the city line is fixed in size, but, but the content is fungible so if if we wanted an article and and this probably is shared with city art uh, marketing but we would you know make recommendations for what it should say or or that it exists at all um, it could it could be a candidate you know for for May or or even April or even June um, to go in there it also, um, we have the bill, and again, it's you know what will how will the ballot questions what's being considered, and um, you know what what each one would mean. Yeah. Mean? You know, I'm thinking that <clears throat> politicians campaign, and that it makes sense to me that. If, if we need to prioritize these in a, in the community in mm -hmm. general, uh, and we want people's input, we need to actively campaign by going to where they go, like Cinco de Mayo celebrations, by having campaigning or information tables or people collecting that information from the community, where, where the community is meeting for whatever they're meeting for. And that might give us a better idea because I love the go, but most of the people I represent either A, don't read it or don't get it or whatever, whereas this is about the entire community mm -hmm. of which we are a segment. So. I've got one more question um, related to this. In the um, uh, feasibility study that was done, um, did they give the city an indication or specific details about other 100,000 people, cities, population yes. cities, what their facilities are? Yes, and? I can send you the study. It's pretty long. I just would be interested in the answer to that question. How long? Actually. Like 70 pages. Long. Yeah, I'll, I'll send the link out to that, to the PowerPoint that was shared with uh, uh, Council as well. Is it yeah. broken down into the, so I could dig into it easily? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's pretty accessible. Um, if you study this, the table of contents, you can sure. tell what to skip. Yeah. Um, and, and, but uh, it's good on objectives and things like that. I also have a short concordance, which because uh, uh, 
of, of things that I think need to need to be re-looked at. Stuff changed in the last two mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and um, and there are more questions. Um, you know, there's more than one way to skin some of these cats. Um, there's the idea that that uh, some of the things that are on this list maybe don't don't belong on it because they could be funded other ways. Are you okay. saying you'd send out the <clears throat> the report or the PowerPoint or both? Oh, both. Okay. Both. Okay. For all the members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's public choice. One of the things that um, I think is important to take on to <clears throat> from what Art had said, excuse me, <clears throat> about having some sort of you know flyer that goes out with the um, utility bill. The other thing we need to consider is that there are a lot of people who don't get their utility bills, right? My utility bill comes via email, right? So, and and I don't actually pay for it, right? So I don't even look at it. It goes to my husband. So we have to consider that. And I think that one thing that would be really important to look at is that if we decide on something that we're going to recommend to the city, is then looking at how can we market that, right? Right to the community so that they're on board with it. And so that means looking at how do we do it by flyer, paper, by, you know, maybe door knocking, by, you know, email, um, social media, all of those things, so that we have a complete almost marketing plan of what we're going to do and how we're going to approach bringing this issue that we want to recommend to the city council, um, make it clear to the community. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, if it's all right, I, I think it would be good that we just have on our agenda every month. Okay. And uh, what um, staff will do is, as the city staff are meeting about uh, the process, I will report um, back every month on what's going on, what schedules are, and also share your feedback uh, back to that group as well. That'd be good. Um, how do you want to proceed? Uh, we throw a lot of stuff out here. Um, and I can only handle so much <laughs> a little bit at a time. How do we how do we want to proceed on this? Um, I'll just throw out one idea. There's, there's always committees. And uh, I could suggest that maybe two or three of us uh, uh, meet a time or two before the next meeting and kind of come up with a strategy like you're talking about. This is going to take some work. Can I, can I throw sure. something out? Sure. I'm wondering if that strategizing about marketing plans is something that our marketing folks are actually yes. already going to be yes. doing. Yes. So that it might be recreating the, the yeah. wheel a little bit. Is we, there a way to connect the two? Well, so let, we, let's say if we have a committee, then yeah. meet with your, someone your, at your the city so that we know. That. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, um, I just want to say, it, forming committees, uh, the committee has to either have meetings posted um, on its own, which you oh. can do by going to Dawn or um, anybody in the city clerk's office can handle that for us. Or if it's two people on a committee, you can do whatever you want. But we can't have, uh, you know, we can't have okay. three or four people o meeting separately so. because of okay. open meetings. Um, and... And the other thing, again, um, I wouldn't personally worry about reinventing the wheel because the whole city is one demographic. The senior demographic is another demographic that will not get the same consideration from the whole city. So, um, you know, so having this board make recommendations, maybe it gets rolled into the city's marketing campaign, or maybe it is something it you know takes some other form right. what i heard julie talking about is that there's no one place to message mm -hmm. right okay. i i would suggest <laughs> that we give the committee a, a chance to meet the, the city staff mm -hmm. committee i then can report back at early february which then can better inform the board of maybe what your next steps are yeah i mean because we feel like if, if the committee meets with the city um, marketing to find out, you know, what is just the, what's the, the, the 
you know, the, 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 the steps, yeah. you know, that they're thinking. And then if there's something that we feel like as a group isn't addressed, then maybe we can bring it back to the marketing. So do they meet uh, on a monthly basis? Or do, well, we haven't met for quite a while, and I keep, I will just share this. I also go to the Park and Rec Advisory Board and also the Library Board, and they're having these same conversations that you all are having, and we need to start reporting information back to you so you can help the bigger cause, and the clock is ticking, and we need to get you moving on. I'm talking about city staff, not, not you all. All the meetings we're talking about so far, though, will be staff. So far, yes. To, so to develop a plan. Your marketing committee will be. Or it's the same group. The same, same, same group. group. Okay, talking the same. Okay. Can I verify something because I'm a little bit confused? So, one of the recommendations that they want from this board would be prioritizing these. Certainly. In terms yeah, of taxing, because if, if it's priority, that's something we can discuss and say, you know, library, rec, culture, assuming that not everything's going to be proposed at the same tax, you know, mm -hmm. at the same tax request. So the first step is what would our priorities be? Yeah, priorities, I think. So. I think Again, there's there's two real questions um, in terms of property taxes. You know, the the real exception to the property tax thing is if if you are are a doctor and a lawyer who are married to each other and you live in Rainbow Ridge, you probably don't even look at your property tax bill, even though it's huge. Mm -hmm. But um, if you are either a widower or um, or even an older couple but retired on a fixed income and you live in a really nice house but you're on a fixed income, your property tax may suddenly be a significant piece of your budget. And so those are people who will be who might be harmed by a, a property tax increase. So you know it, the, those are those are things that this demographic, could weigh in on, because on the other hand, if you um, are a well-established resident, sales taxes may not mean so much because you've got all your stuff. You know, you your your purchases, except for things like food, are very discretionary. You know, like I don't care that this shirt is seven years old, <laughs> right? <laughs> and. Uh, um, so uh, I don't buy a lot of clothes, and, and so sales taxes is the deal. Okay, so the I want to make sure I'm tracking here. The end point of all of this mm -hmm. is the ballot measure. Yes. Okay. Which would be in the rulemaking. Mm -hmm. But it has to. But the but it has to be in yeah. August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Marcia, um, I just want to bring up one more thing. The thing that comes to mind during this whole discussion. Is fundraising. Um, a lot of these things to me are special interest mm -hmm. items and um, I would love to know if the money that was spent on the feasibility study mm -hmm. included how those things were funded uh, for, for cities that were 100,000 population. There is some information in that, not as much as as necessarily could be have been provided. Mm -hmm. So, so one thing that's in there, you sound like you've read it with a magnifying glass, Julie. I haven't read it with a magnifying glass, but I have read it. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that, Julie? The feasibility study. Did you, I mean? Did you see what I'm looking for? Uh, uh, I feel like I think like Marcia said. I feel like there's a little bit, but not, not a lot. So, a for lot. example. Um, there's a table that says whether each facility is operating at a profit or at a loss and to what extent it is subsidized by the municipality surrounding it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a big part of it. How it got to happen was, you know, is is another, is, is different. Um, that would be nice to know. It would be nice to know. Uh, also, 
that's nice to know is is that the theater and I think no other piece of this um, is on the on the uh, staff's list of, of prioritized things. Most of it is are are things that, that the presumption is that would be entirely paid for by this tax. On the other hand, the uh, the, the theater arts complex uh, is not entirely paid for by this tax. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is a presumption of private investment, including both donations and, uh, um, uh, the, well, yeah, donations are investors in the sense of, of builders who would get something out of it, although it just never expected to operate as a profit. Um, but so, yes, um, and, and one thing that is, is um, you know, recommendations like that. I wouldn't expect these to necessarily come from the board, um, but you know, if you know, so like you know, if you've been on the water board or something, Union Reservoir probably doesn't need to be funded by this because it could be funded other ways. But it's on the list. Um, so. You know, those are things that if we know them, you know, you get a people, a bunch of people who have been conscious for 50 or 60 or 70 years, then who knows what we know, you know. So all bets are off in terms of, of what we can put into this once we start studying the list. We're a valuable resource just because of who we are. So I wonder where we go. I, I think we can see from here, if wait till February and see where uh, well, the report from Jeff, and then decide at that point which. Yeah, Ron, do you have any have any comments you want to make at this point? I'm just just listening, just absorbing. Okay. <laughs> well, I've got to, kind of to go along with that. I've got a suggestion, or we can just wait until the next meeting. Um, well, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're going to be sending out the, the summary and the, and the uh, PowerPoint. So I would suggest that all of us study that to the extent that you want to. Uh, so we're all more up to speed as far as the whole issue, because I, I certainly don't feel up to speed yet. And I would also like to ask, I do think we need a kind of a working group, whether we call it a working group or committee or whatever, but we need... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I love it. Sorry. Sorry, don't you have to pay for that? No. <laughs> <laughs> How many people would be? Do uh, you have the post working groups? Yes. Well, yeah. if okay. there, except, right. if there, except if there, except if there are two people. Two people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're not going to be meeting. I'm just saying. At this point, is there anybody? I would like to work on this. Is there anybody else that would like to work with me, as far as, come with our. Come up with recommendation that is our endpoint to get to the ballot measure that we've been talking. Anybody want to work with me on that and just kind of be prepared for the next meeting as to, you know, where we go and have some ideas on how we might proceed. That's one way of looking at it. One way to do it. Well, I would work with you. Okay, so there's I'm, one. Okay. I, I should not work with you, no, but you I would be available to answer questions. Okay. And I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Okay, you so I've got one going once. Yeah, I, 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 I would okay. work on it. Yeah. Depending on how much time it's going to take, I would. I would. Oh, I'd send your take point 30 hours a week. That's, all right. that's, 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 that's as long as it's not full time. Okay, <laughs> okay Janine, Art, anybody else? Well, staff will be as involved all? there as, as you want us to be. Okay. Um, we, we would like to be a part of those conversations. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Dave, can, yeah. I, I, will you clarify that? Are you looking for people to, because we're all going to, you know, do our due diligence and read the, yeah. the feasibility study, right. as you said, to, you know, the depth that we would like to. Yeah. And then uh, are you trying to get a group of people to figure out, per, figure out which item we're going to focus on and then pursue yeah. it? Or are we all as a group going to decide on what we're going to focus on? Well, yes and no. And then the, the way I see it is we, we, we need somebody to kind of focus on it, really spend some time on it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm looking to Art and Janine to do after the February meeting. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'd like to ask like, some of the people I know in my community to 
I'd like to just sure. throw that out to them Absolutely. and say, what would be, what would your thoughts on this right. be? You know, the more input we can get, yeah. the better. But what I'm, what I'm thinking then that we, we would, after the February meeting, we will have more feedback. And at that point, I would say, if it seems feasible, we'll appoint a committee and then we'll come up with the task of coming up with specific recommendations. Yeah. So we'll, can, can we come up with a committee after February? That's after what I'm saying. Is, yeah, okay. right now, which would probably be the same people that are volunteering right now, is, is what I'm trying to say. But it doesn't have to be. Okay. I mean, Whoever wants to at the yeah. time, but just so we're really clear, is that if the three of you meet, we yeah. have to post that. Okay. And staff can do all that to, to post it. You know, that's always a, a tricky point. Well, if, if, what about informal conversations? We're neighbors. If you two are having a conversation, a that, but and you and Art okay. can have a if we get conversation. Together, that has to be posted. But if you three get together. To do that has to be posted. what I'm going to say. City business uh -huh. it has to be posted. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And it should be public. Yes. So now sometimes I mean that could seriously if you do it in the spring, it could be on somebody's big front porch as long as the location is posted and you don't mind somebody coming and yeah. sitting on the grass and listening. Yeah. And somebody needs to take minutes, or you can have it recorded on your phone. But there has to be some kind of a record that it happens. If it's three or more. Okay. Where's it uh, like it can be posted like down to city specific? Yeah, center? that's what you do. You call right. the city right. clerk's office and mm -hmm. say this is happening. Yeah, and that also goes okay. on the city website. Okay. And how much in advance do we have to work? At least 24 hours. Okay. Oh, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's better since it is a public meeting to do it further out than that so that public has the opportunity to show up and, and know about it. Right. A week is really nice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. You guys are all so busy, you probably have to schedule that. Right. Well, uh, it's, it's a little fuzzy, you know, what we've just been talking about, but I think we need to put some structure to it so we can get started on it. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, but we will keep you informed. I mean, we'll contact you if we... Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if there'll be a whole lot of contact between the three of us this, this next month. But, uh, I think the main task is just to kind of become familiar with the All right, is everybody okay with that? Okay, I don't think we need a motion for that. All right, any other discussion on this whole issue? Oh, I would like to just put in context that that Johnson report um, is only about the for performing arts, excuse me, and the public events center, which would not go on the ballot measure at all, even though the study covered both, because that would be privately funded. Okay, so um, two warnings about that. Oh. Don't expect to see anything about the gym. Oh. And um, something new. Right. And then the other thing is all the stuff about an events center would be not relevant to the ballot measure. Um, Jeff, you might extract the council communication uh, that gave the list of things to be prioritized. Okay. And um, the other thing is that, that wouldn't hurt. Um, is the old uh, pool and ice feasibility study just so people can see what one looks like? Yeah. And it's really it's it's so old that that the money is completely meaningless, and it's you know and it having um, is he kind of cute trick? Um, <laughs> How'd you do that? Uh, my phone's motion sensor. Oh. If I turn it completely over, it shuts off the ring. Um, oh, <laughs> isn't that a good trick? Yeah. Um, but it, uh, and we probably would not, especially since the, the school system did decide to build an Olympic sized pool um, after our bond issue didn't pass. Um, but it um, uh, at least lets you know what the elements of it are. But it would be a normal pool and probably no ice or, you know. People could, I mean, that's a requirements thing. You know, the public might have second thoughts and at Rhythm on the River, you know, they would all say, we want ice, we want ice. That could happen. Um, and and uh, so it would be it would be useful from a, you know, an idea standpoint. 
but it's, it's you know, not what just, we're proposing. To yeah, it's this. not the current proposal. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and any current proposal might have um, it would the proposal would emphasize things like extra meeting rooms and studios and you know things like that as opposed to this really emphasized you know the big stuff. Another thing is that any pool proposal, you know, a warming pool or a lawn pool might be, is, is likely to be a big deal because of our demographic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of you that have been on for a while discussed that at length, and uh, those are, who are newer didn't get to hear that discussion, but it's a, um, but we lost it at the hospital and it was a big loss to the community mm -hmm. in the minds of our senior population. Any other old business? Hearing none, new business, discuss monthly in-person surveys. Yeah, that, that came from the information that, that David, that, that you provided as a summary. And Julie and yeah, Daniel. As a summary that po the possibility of the board doing monthly surveys to interact with those that are using the senior center and to get their feedback of what's working, how it could be improved, or maybe what we need to consider offering. And I think this can dovetail into an idea that the programming staff had. Char Sloan talked with me about, do we ever have greeters? Do we ever have people like from a board who just volunteer to float the senior center for a couple of hours and greet people? and? I said, well, we've done that at particular events. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, but not on an ongoing basis. And I thought, wow, could that tie together with this idea of doing surveys? Mm -hmm. That maybe once a month there's a board member who signs up for a shift to float the building and talk to people as could a greeter it, and if people want to engage with the survey. Could it just be a volunteer, not necessarily a board member? Well, it was just, it was the board who were interested in the survey. Mm -hmm. that, so that's why it. I'm just yes, so, yeah. I have another, um, you know, idea about that. Is it possible to have a station in the front entry that, you know, here's a survey that we'd like to take. This is, these are the questions that we'd like to, you know, and have a, have a big board so that it's engaging. Mm -hmm. And then maybe people will do the survey on their own instead of having someone and there. instead of handing it out, mm -hmm. discussing the questions with the person and help, you know, not just having a, a survey handout, but yeah. to discuss it and and give feedback back to... Yeah. Yeah. But, I had a little sorry. experience of that, you know, when we did that did together, mm -hmm. Biggie Open House. I felt like people were more receptive to me greeting them and asking them a question than they were to sitting down and filling yeah. out the form. And we have to make it short, you know, a couple of questions and and get their input back. I mean, we can document it, but you take a piece of paper and a pen and give it to somebody. My experience was they were more resistant to it's that. It's a chore. But they would talk to you in a second. So. So I, I feel like if we did like a, almost sort of a combination of the two, right? There, because there are some people that didn't yeah. really want anything to do with it, right? But maybe it's on their own, you know, volition, they might walk over and say, hey, what's this? And, you know, make some sort of response, but also then have, you know, somebody greeting. However, I will say that it, you know, it sounds like a lot of people are very busy. And so, I mean, that means that every single one of us is going to have to volunteer that time, right? At once a month, like... Well, it, it's one person a month. It's not, you know, Janine does it every month for the next six months, right? So if we're going to do that, have that kind of a survey, we all have to be willing to participate in that time. Or involve our volunteer base here at the Senior Center in assisting with that. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be here anyway on Tuesday, I don't have a problem with extending another couple of you know, two hours to be a greeter, right. it's fine. I would do that. Yeah. I guess, <clears throat> you know, my first impression is that's uh, not a lot of feedback. 
Uh, for example, if you did it once a month, you know, for the next six months, one day a month, you know, it's not a lot of yeah, for two hours, it's not, not a lot much of information. You know, so. That's why I feel like if you have a station where they can yeah, just they have a handout, you know, or we board. have a link to it to something you know like that. to something that they can go to through the go. They can go to the oh, link and they can. Oh my goodness, Josh. Um, oh, but they have a link that they can go to, so they can do it at their own time at home, something like that. Can it be both? Yeah, yep. or all of the above, right? Were you, were you thinking staff involvement also, or just board involvement? Well, we really haven't talked a whole lot about oh, it. Okay. We, this yeah. was just, oh, just a, as okay. a follow up Spin-off. to okay. the all December right. meeting. You, you all can say no if you want. I mean that. Yeah. Uh, but I, it, it does, it is intriguing, even if it is two hours a, a month. I think the, if it's in person, the information you gather is going to be more valuable than if somebody just filling out a, a paper survey or yeah. doing something online. So. But I, I would say, and Ron would jump in here, that staff would w- be willing to help as they can. Um, you know, so I, I think we've developed some type of schedule and plug names in and uh-huh. work with the comms team to, if, if we're just gonna have the computer or paper surveys, uh, work with the comms team to help us develop the best survey that we can um, ask for or to, to get. If, because we, if I write the questions, they're gonna be leading. They, they really know uh, what they're doing, and, and I'm thinking three to five questions at, at the most. Yeah. Um, but three at the most. Yeah. Three at the most. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, we found that five is too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the other ones. I don't know. Does everybody think this this some form of a survey like or interview that we've been talking about? Does everybody think that's a good idea? That we should pursue. Yeah. I do. I mean, I think that engaging our community <clears throat> to find out what's important to them is really important. Uh-huh. Right, so that we can then then we have the guidance to direct what where we're going with right. how we can advise to them. And if the board wants it, I'm willing to work to coordinate that. Maybe coordinate that with some volunteers if they're interested. So I know how limited your staff is in terms of demand for their time, but if it's information that I'm doing for the board. I'm happy to be the coordinator. Scott from the um, comms team helped us do exactly that. Um, just a, we called it a needs assessment and it was a little longer than three questions, but um, we had QR codes that people could um, just, it's a sign in the front and we had paper copies as well. And so for people that wanted to use their phone, they could do that and we got the survey codes right to go to um, digitally um, and then we had paper for people that, that didn't you know want to use their phone so it was really really helpful how was the winter response rate um it was actually pretty pretty good because of the different ways that we did it um and then i think um we may have even put it on our social media page i think and so our goal was um, 200 parents, um, 200 kids. And so we set specific, and, and it was about how um, we were going to come back after the pandemic and what kinds of services we needed to, to provide. Um, and so we set those numbers and then did outreach based on that. I think we would know, want to know specifically what the board wants to know from the mm-hmm. survey. Like three things. Start with three. Yeah. And we can see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. You said you coordinate it. Mm -hmm. So you mean like to put together a schedule of who would be, you know, rotated? Yeah. If if we can get volunteers to help. I mean, I, I appreciate the limited time that the staff at the senior center may have to do that, but I would be able to and willing to do that with the board. And if any of the volunteers would like to 
be a part of that and help me by reviewing your sheet. So would you want to kind of structure it to what would what would well, we I do? want to know what what do we want to know? Mm -hmm. What is the services we want to know about prioritizing the tax thing and what information specifically um, with this survey do you want to know? And when would this happen? I think we, we, we would need to start after our February meeting. Well, I think we get we get the information that you want, right. bring it to the comms team, ask the comms team what's what are some good free questions mm -hmm. to ask to get right. this information and hopefully be able to get that by the February meeting. Okay. If, if you can outline today what it is that you want to know. Right. I think I think the survey was about the feasibility study and what the the, the recreation you know the tax proposal. Last Are we month, conflating the two? Yes. <clears throat> Last month, you all were talking about wanting to do sort of ongoing surveying of mm -hmm. customers here about their experience here and what they needed. Right. So so that's what this was we about. Talking about. Services <laughs> satisfaction. I'm mean, trying to kind of categorize right. barriers. Right. Barriers. Okay. Well, we so know what's the, the name one. of this survey we're talking about? For this is the office survey. Oh, um, okay. I, I have to find it. No, let, let me look for it. <laughs> this is we're talking about the monthly surveys now, as yeah. opposed yeah. to yeah. monthly outreach right. about yeah. the tax. Yeah. Right. All right. And, and, and I Versus think, outreach. I think when mm -hmm. we're generating these questions and well, identifying the approach we want to take, I think we need to be mindful of, uh, as you mentioned, what information do we want to get out of it? Because um, bo both proposed methods provide qualitative data and quantitative data. And you know the qualitative data gives us those specifics. The conversations, we're taking notes, we're collecting that information. Um, as, as for the, the, the um, quantitative data, you know, that's ranking our services on a scale of one to five, right? Um, it, does, it, it gives us the information we need on the services we're providing, but um, not the specifics, right? It, it's giving us um, areas of improvement, identifying the things we're doing well, but as for you know, the specifics, the qualitative data, you know, that gives us the, I like this, however, you know, um, we need these improvements. I would like to see more of this. So it, knowing what information we want will help us shape those questions. And I think that can help us um, identify our delivery methods, right? If it's that, 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 that um, uh, um, quantitative piece, you know, that's more of those online surveys. Um, um, we can have computers set up, as you mentioned, the station, um, computer options, um, checklists, you know, um, here's our three questions. Rate, rate us in these categories, um, or if we want somebody floating around, right? Asking these questions, recording those notes, that gives us the, gives us, the digit, gives us two different um, sources of information uh, of the services we're providing. So once we identify those specifics, I think then we look at our delivery methods. You know. I mean, there'll be some obstacles, like you're doing an informal thing, people coming in. They're coming in for classes, they're on a timeline. Right. So we're going to have to kind of look at that and see what works. And it, it isn't like just posting somebody at the door to ask questions because their agenda is going to be number one. <laughs> and then their willingness to participate. So we'll have to feel it out and yeah. see what works. Uh, do we do anything to leverage? Um so when I, when I register for a certain activity, you know, what do we do? Well, the technical is streamlined into the program. So once it concludes, then we just the, the focus take it off, of, off of that experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have from time to time, but right. not systemically. Right. No. Okay. I think a qualitative approach is probably where we want to go right now. Or the, a quantitative, I, I understand what you're saying about a quantitative approach. Seems to me we want to focus on the qualitative one at the beginning, and maybe later we can submit it to some sort of some kind of quantitative. Ours was more 
more qualitative. And I'm gonna, I'll send a, a copy to Jeff and to Ronnie, and then you all can share it with the two of you. I think I'd like more voice mm -hmm. um, in a way that allows us to make our make any decisions based off really often based off voice. All right, so where do we go from here? Um, do you want still? Do you want to? <laughs> initiate this stuff this month? I would, I'm happy to do that. Okay. I just basically need to know what specifically, yeah. you know, what information do you want to start with specifically? Because it may change two months down the road. And we can have people think about that um, and discuss it next meeting. I think so. I, yeah, I think that would be a good idea. And then there might be some other information within the survey that we're going to provide to us that stimulates it. But it's, so I don't think anybody's really prepared to give any no. specific and ideas. Maybe today, you and I can so. sit down and right. talk about yeah. the quantitative then, specifics right. and make some recommendations to the board. Back to the board on right. the February. All right. right. Okay. Well, we'll just we'll put that on the, on the agenda for next time. All right, any other comments on that? Okay, meeting dates, time, and location. Is this for our group? Yes, this is a formal thing that the clerk's office uh, asks us to do every year that we need a motion that, number one, states the location of where the meetings will be held, <clears throat> and a second motion that would say the, the Day of the month and, and the time. Okay. Uh, and the and confirm where meeting notices are posted. Yeah, that that will. They're two separate things. So we need two. Do we need two separate motions yes. for that? Yeah. Okay. Well, is there any reason we wouldn't have it on the first Wednesday of each month here at ten o'clock? I I think they should. Is there any staff? Okay. Well, let's have a motion then. That, um, to that effect. I need, move we continue meeting at the same time and place. It's 10 o'clock, first Wednesday of the month. And day, yeah. And at this location. All right. Is that a motion? Is there a second? No second. Okay, second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Motion passed. Confirm where meeting notices are posted. Let's have a motion on that, where they should be posted. Primarily, it's done on the city website, but I think the board has chosen to post a paper um, agenda here at the Senior Center, um, and we can post it wherever else you would like to do that. I, I think it, at the Civic Center would be another mm -hmm. good location. So, okay. Once, once the agenda has been established, your staff posts it. Is yes. that what you've been doing? Yes. Yeah. It's listed on the back of the agenda four places. Is that yeah. what we're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's have a motion. Uh, if everybody's okay with that, let's have a motion. So moved. Art makes a motion to confirm where the meeting notice, notice, notices are posted. Is there a second? I second. A second. So uh, that motion is to keep it as, as it is. It is. Okay. okay. Does Robin usually come? Yeah, and then we mail the agenda to those other locations, and the clerk or somebody posts those. Let's see, did you second it? Yes, yes. Okay. me and second it. And then, okay, all those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 All right, any opposed? Motion passes. Assignment of representatives to outside agencies. Um, Actually, is this a requirement that you do this every year? Mm -hmm. the, I believe the yeah, board does do that. that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Sheila had emailed that she would like to be the representative I saw of the Friends Board. Yeah. Well, let's see. We have to make a motion for that. Well, I, I don't, I don't I think. I no. We could, we could, if everybody's okay with just leaving it the way it is, we could make a motion saying that we'll do that. Except that Sheila is replacing Susan, who's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, she, but that we couldn't. We put her 
Allen as a representative? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she was the alternate her. anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. Do we need an alternate to Sheila then? I guess we can do that next time. Do we need do we have to have an alternate? Can you do it as it come comes yeah. up? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Well, okay. and for the friends meetings, the manager is always at those meetings. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the manager can always right. report into it if she was Okay, asked. so uh, just to go through these, then Janine is the uh, area agency uh, rep. Uh, Sheila will be the friends rep. Are you okay team. staying in that, Janine? Yes. Okay. okay. And Art will be the Latino mm -hmm. uh, rep. Economic development. Uh, that's been you, Janine, has it not? Well, no. no. no? Oh. <laughs> it's been me for the last oh. year. But and I've tried to track down when that meeting yeah, is. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, you, yeah. you want to continue? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll stay, stay as, long as, as long as somebody can make okay. Is that the LEDP? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So their they're, uh, CEO resigned, so they're in a little bit of disarray. Yeah. Um, who would be? I haven't figured that part out, who the next <laughs> person is. Uh, well, maybe, we don't know who the next yes, person is. It's no, been a year but, since uh, we've been trying. Yeah. 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 Oh, Maybe I know Joni who the will. active person is. Yes, it's it's Stephanie Pitts Noggle. Let me email you. Oh, okay. And yeah. Judy, right? Okay. Well, I think Jeff. Yeah, I'll, I'll get Jeff, back to you. Jeff, you figure it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, you keep me out of it until yep. we figure okay. out. Yeah. Okay. We don't Just, need to confuse anybody. Okay. Sustainability implementation. Anybody want to fight me for it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to. I would like to be a backup. Okay. That's one that anybody can go to, by the mm -hmm. way. Yeah. It's open to the public. They're very interesting meetings. I know. I think. I think. All right. Engaging care com communities. That was Susan and I. I am willing to remain on that. I mean, right now it's only a whenever they get together thing. So we had two about two on They had both Susan and I initially. Okay. Uh, and we have not uh, been called upon for several months, but if someone would like to be a part of that, um, then let me know and uh, I there, can. Is there anybody here that would want to volunteer for the can you share group? a little bit about what's involved in that? It is a, a, a committee that is, uh, or a group of people that have wide range experiences within the community and it was brought together to develop an online information program that is being developed by people associated with the University um, of Colorado. And um, I mean, it's, it, it initially was deciding what format, and it went from there to, you know, Pretty developing technical. a website. It got very technical after a while, but it, they had specific questions. Uh, you know, our input about confidentiality for me, my input about what medical things should be asked and what would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. It was a developmental thing that was actually being, um, I guess, organized by our city manager. Mm -hmm. And it's still in the developmental phase. And I really, I don't know how Susan and I got invited to participate. And I think they're in the process of actually um, contracting to, to write the website now. And so yeah. it's it's pretty much so if I were a user of, so for example, the senior center system, and then I had a grandchild um, that was being seen at the, at the youth center, and maybe I accessed um, another agency. It was so that I could opt into this system so that then um, the people that I was working with could talk to each other. Um, and could better coordinate kind of how they could support me. Um, and so there was a lot, like you said, a lot of discussions about confidentiality, 
about, you know, should, um, should medical information be included in there? What does it mean to opt into a system? Um, we found that, and this kind of started with the fire department, um, and then responding repeatedly to um, some of the same um, individuals, and <clears throat> just re it really just is about coordinating care, and so um, how we were how we were going to do that. But it's my understanding from talking to um, Eliberto is that we might be in the process of contracting now to actually get the framework of the website um, written after all of that. Um, right. Implications. So currently, there is I couldn't Google engaging caring community. No, no. Something, you, it might, something on the website, something on the city website might come up, but um, we don't okay. have the actual user website. Yeah. Of, yeah, it's in that process. completely developmental at this point. Yeah. It's, and it's much more putting the, the program together. Um, and a couple of the members actually uh, have passed away. So um, I'm not sure what the status of it is now, but. So this was in person meeting? No, it's all it's done okay. um, okay. by Zoom. Okay. okay, do you want to be part of that? Or anybody want to be with Janine? All right. Well, Susan, guess, yeah. you mentioned Susan. She was past. She was our past, past president. president. Oh, she's not on the board, board anymore. Board. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Do, do they need two representatives? Kind of you know, I I wish I could tell you, Art. I don't even know because I don't know how I ended up being asked. I don't know if it was through the senior center or what. I, I assume it was. It, was, it, was, yeah. it, was, it probably was and, because both Susan and I ended up on yeah. that. And, and at this point, if they're not doing, if they're not really doing anymore since they're working on the mm -hmm. website, then real, realistically, we probably only need two. Okay. Right. I'm thinking that there probably would be feedback later. That's what they yeah. asked each of the division managers to do is to have like users of our services come and give us feedback. And so um, so that's probably how, how you were. Um, yeah, involved. they have to put it together mm -hmm. in order for us to really identify areas. I mean, the biggest area of concern involved around confidentiality. Right, right, yeah. And right. being on a public website. Right. So, but you can't make any comments about that until the system is presented. And there is, it looks like there is a PDF on the city's website that talks about enabling the caring community. It's out of a, the um, University of Colorado um, Anschutz. Um, right. The professor, um, Don. Don. Uh, uh, was I don't uh, remember Don, Don Meese. Meese. Don Meese. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's actually a good PDF there if you want to mm -hmm. take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would go ahead. You go to go ahead. Here you go. Join Janine. Yeah. All right. Any reports this time? Do we need a motion on this on this membership? No. Okay. Um, what about the? I'm sorry. The discussed 2023 goals and suggestions for agenda items. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite not quite done with this. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry. Any, any reports? Do you mean reports about those? I'm sorry, groups? of the uh, eight, uh, area aging trends? Uh, no, my meeting is on Friday, okay. so I'm always a month behind with them because they're okay. two days after we do. Well, the former and the present trends are both gone, so. I pulled Susan, I would report in. Oh, um, okay. Trends, really mostly what we ended up talking about in December were financial things and budget. Um, they are gonna meet at the end of January and approve a 2023 budget. It is much the same as the prior year's budget um, with just a few increases. The total is $182,000 of support that the friends are looking at giving the senior center this year, which includes everything from $52,000 for funding part of two staff positions, um, to marketing funds, printing costs, volunteer support, and our last resort. It's, it is a great deal of support that they are looking at continuing to give us here. Um, and they reviewed donations from Colorado Gifts. They got $5,528 from Colorado Gives donations in November, December, or I guess maybe just December. Um, there's no other major updates from friends. So the uh, staff positions are 
are funded by the city, but this is contribute money? So about three quarters of two staff positions are funded by the city, and the city has not uh, agreed to move the rest of that funding into the general fund. So uh, the recreation funding here was paying for a quarter of our marketer's position. Um, the recreation funds can't sustain that if we're going to hire more recreation staff, which we really need to do. So the friends have agreed to take it on, and the city actually lowered it to 19.5% of that position and would be funded somehow not by the general fund. So the friends are going to vote on that in January, but have, have agreed that they'll take that on. And um, a quarter of Melissa Locino's resource specialist position here has been funded by the friends the entire time she's worked here. Uh, which is going on three years. Um, we just haven't been able to get the city to pick that money up and fund it out of the general fund yet. And so we that can ask could be a project of ours too, couldn't it? That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> we, we asked, I timed that right. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We, we asked want, every year. Do you want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say it is not the friend's intention to permanently fund staff positions. That's yeah. never been well, It makes it difficult when you are funding staff positions for the city to uh, fund it full time. Okay. So they're like, why not? The friends will do it. And the friends are like, but our intention was never to do this forever. It was just to get it started. I, I, I don't want to belabor it. I have a question on that about the, the donations that they've had. Uh, do they, are they still coming in as they have been in the past? Do you know? You mean overall donations? Yeah. Um, we don't have final numbers. It was looking like 56,000, I think, total donations for the year. And I... I don't know a comparison to prior years, but we can find that out. Okay. I just, I mean, they've been pretty healthy yeah. in the budget, and I'm just wondering if, with everything going on, the pandemic and everything else, if they not getting the donations. I've been, I'm on another committee where donations are not coming in at all like they used to. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I can check compares with the friends of the library. Yeah. That would be an interesting thing to know. Well, that's something. Uh, it's not appropriate for this discussion, I don't think, but I think that's something I'd like to pursue as far as what can we do maybe to get some additional funding there. Uh, I've been through that many times, so I know kind of how it works. Uh, we'll talk some more. This might be an area that you send feedback to council. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Have we sent any feedback before? Not on positions that I can recall. It's, I mean, the staff comes up with a budget and it goes through the budget sieve, whatever yeah. that is. So that it's actually, you know, the, 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 the council making a big recommendation about where money goes is fairly rare because, because the staff figures all out what they want and then the, you know, the, the council has to really stand on its hind legs to change any of Well, who, who makes the decision as far as allocation of staffing funds? Oh. City council does. But when it gets down to the department, who does? City council does. Kelly, you're down? So I'm lying to you. <laughs> Can I share an observation from the budget process this year? So the, the budget starts with the department, the department, Everybody in their different divisions puts together what yeah. they would like yeah. to get in the budget for next year. It goes through the administration with the city, so folks from finance, our city manager, yeah. then it moves to council. I feel like there's places for input all along the way there, and okay. I observed at a council meeting about the budget, council asking, why do we see nothing here about pickleball courts? Because people had come to council all year long and said, we need more pickleball courts. So what I observed was that the public speaking about a need got through to council. Yes, through the okay, council. Okay, but but it's a done. By the time it gets to council, the budget recommendation to council is a done deal. Yes. So essentially, what happens? It's perceived by the council as a done deal, and what what happens is it's it's really rolled up by the time that it goes to council. So we don't see the pencils and paper clips at all. Um, we do see new full-time equivalent funded positions, and that's about as fine-grained as it gets. Um, and then, as I said, 
uh, while the council, the council is, the hope from the staff, I believe, is that the council just approves everything that as recommended. The council has to really get on its hind legs to make changes to the budget. It happens. Um, uh, usually what, the more likely thing that happens is a council member will question the reasoning. There's a little more transparency. The staff, uh, risk the responsible portion of the staff opens things up. And the council generally agrees. So, um, yeah, this, the council, nothing can be funded without council approval, but the decision-making process the council is the last, so I don't want to, you know, no, I don't I, want to, it to seem like Jeff and I are contradicting yeah, each other. Yeah, no, no, I get, I get it. I and get I would it. envision that the survey that you're talking about could, could be part of, you know, if anything comes up from that, could be part of what Ronnie would bring <coughs> forward to, um, to in budget requests um, for that year as well, and you have some good data about that. People, 500 people that filled out this survey, and they were all saying they wanted pickleball courts. So, you know, what, what does that budget request look like? All right. Um, let's see. I guess we're done with that. Discuss 2023 20, goals and suggestions for agenda items. Um, didn't we used to have, didn't Michelle always have with um, our? Um, agenda, the list of items that we were focusing on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. We were. Yeah, that there, there there that too. Could it be the upcoming agenda? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, thank well, you. Well, but you were talking about areas within the within the operation we were going to focus on. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what you're talking about? Yes, there. I feel like there was. Yeah, but there was a section. Oh, yes, on. there was a section yeah. where we used to have these are the things that we're focusing on for the year. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the upcoming agenda items. Okay, well, let's, um, let's see. Okay, we have, we're running out of time here. Uh, up, and up, and up. this will wait. We can talk about this. I, thought, I was going to suggest, yes. you know, that's a big enough item, so maybe we should leave that until yeah. next week sure. or next month, rather. Um, <coughs> on the goals. I think we could put the goals. Is that okay with everybody? We throw the goals in, like we did last time, yeah. and refresh our memories and how we're going to approach that. Because I don't think we did much, you know, if I remember. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, so. And then I, I, one question I do have in terms of goals is that did we? I know at one point in time we had all been discussing about. Um, what we what services we wanted to see here one of them was foot care have, have we gotten that figured out no one applied when they opened the rfp last 2022 okay. um so that needs to be reposted as okay. a new rfp this year i'm yeah. sorry what rfp was that was that for the pronouns foot care yeah, yeah. Foot care. yeah. A time when I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I ever heard in my life. Uh -huh. <laughs> However, <laughs> it's an aging thing. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. Brandy, I, I, um, I mean, maybe it's just nobody outside the senior center thinks it's important, um, but uh, I wonder if it might be a liability thing. You know, so like if you mm. go to a private uh, nail salon. And they're a, and you're an overweight senior. They say, "Are you diabetic?" And they'll say no. If you, you know, some of them will say no if you say you're diabetic because they don't want the liability of potentially wounding you and it won't heal. Mm -hmm. And um, so my question is, if the city, which is self-insured through Kaiser, um, put in the RFP that there might be some liability uh, coverage associated with the post that might change responses. I don't know if it was, I, I, I was not involved in the RFP, okay. so I don't know. No, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out as a suggestion if you want to try again. Well, that that could have been. private, that would be 
a consideration before it was always done through the hospital, mm -hmm. through Longmont United, and when that went away, it ended. Uh, mm -hmm. And it neither of, uh, well, I know that with UC Health, they have an outpatient clinic, so they were very happy for us to refer people to their outpatient clinic, but they didn't want to come here. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the issues. And then the other issue that if it's an independent person, they're definitely want to, they will definitely have to be sure. covered by Somebody. liability because they can't come in and do care without liability insurance. And mm -hmm. then the third recommendation in terms of the, if no response to the PDF would be, I wonder if outreach to any of the in-town podiatrist offices mm -hmm. might be helpful. It was actually a home care agency who covered the need after the hospital. After the hospital yeah. pulled out. Yeah. So it might, might be that there's an option there too because there's a lot of home care agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it needs to be looked at and I know, what I know, we submitted. I know Michelle was kind of cool on the whole idea of looking on her care, wasn't she? No, I think she was. No, no. she really she wanted it. Yeah. Really? She really, it was, mm -hmm. it was well attended here, yeah. especially for our diabetic patients. I think it was just something that kind of ended up on the back burner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, well, I would suggest maybe, how does this sound? We put it on the agenda and either do it or not, tell us. Yep, just okay. proceed with an RFP or just forget about it. Because it's, it's been floating along on the agenda for months. Yeah, definitely here. One more. So it, yep. I want to say it, it was posted last spring and they closed it in June, I believe, um, because no one had... Yeah. Like, but yeah, I like but what Marcia said about adding the fact that no liability. Well, we would, or, we or the opposite, the having the city of, budget for yeah. liability so that yeah. it's yeah. part oh, of, of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well Ronnie, I'd really like to see it, what the senior center staff can, can think about that. What do they think about the need? If you, you know, yeah. do you I, see a need? Yes. And if you see a need, then, then you know, as a board member, I'd support continuing to look for somebody. In so, some way. so that means reposting it. Yeah. Right. So, right. Dave, are you suggesting putting that on one of our goals for the year to get it finished and done? Well, I guess we could do it that way. Yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think done. that's important. Yeah. Is like it's been, get it's been on the agenda ever since I've been on this board. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's just let's just do it or forget about it. Yeah. I would like to see one of our. Are we done with foot feet? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're not. laughs> I would really like to see something about our registration as a goal. We've talked about this off and on for over a year. I'm still frustrated with it. And what I'd specifically like to see, and this would also include city rec totally is when you go online to register for something I mean when you go to the go and you find a class you would and you're online and you would like to register for a class why can you not click that registration number and be done why do you have to go through all this big process trying to register for a class so what? we let's have that on the agenda Staff has met after the board talked about that last time. Robin is working on some how to's to, to help with is that. Is that our tech person? No, but she's a, she's the admin. Okay. She's the registration guru. Yeah. Oh. But so we don't have a tech person that really helps us with the front end stuff to, to keep a face in things. Uh, our ETS helps with the back part of it. But uh, we have some things we're working on that we're hoping will help with that. The system doesn't allow it to be done like you just described. That system does not exist. Mm -hmm. So we will I'll have Sue Ellen come to the next meeting along with Robin and share with you what, what we're looking at to try to make that better. Okay. So this that is goes to the museum too, by the way. 
Satisfied with it, and said you're going to come back. Yeah, and we'll come back at yeah. the next meeting and report on what we need to do. Yeah, okay. and I would like to add that um, it is actually not true that there is no solution. There is no solution that the city is willing to invest in mm. at um, this time. Yeah, <laughs> on, on a software architect yeah. that's, from that's, back in the day. That's the root of the problem. Yeah, yes. that's another recommendation. The, the, the challenge we're yeah. finding is that there isn't anything really better out there that works to do all of the things that the city needs to do, whether it's registration, reservations, a website type of thing. So we, we've heard you and we are trying to find ways to make it better within the system we currently have. Are the are the IT staff that you have are they city employees? The are they contracted? No, they're city employees. Okay. Yeah. The the challenge is is it is called it's a canned program, so the city can't go in and make changes to make it better, and and so you have to work within the software that they provide you, and they do limited improvements each year. Because every community is making other types of uh, recommendations as well. And they prioritize which has the biggest impact for the most number of communities. Okay. Google, that will be on the agenda for yeah. next week. Google's and next month. researches what's out there besides the one you have. All right, we're running. I'm just curious. Yeah. Well, so nobody, we'll because relate. we don't have the money to do it anyway. Oh. Can we? Briefly, can we have a supervisor's report, or have we done that already? <laughs> um, I'll say we've had more staff changes since the last meeting. Our recreation supervisor, Jamie, has left the organization, oh. Oh. so we have to rehire that position. Uh, we also have two new recreation positions we're going to be hiring this year, so hopefully those will get posted soon. Our LHA resource specialist, Melinda, is leaving next week is her last week. Um, so we're now in another position there. What's her? The Longmont, sorry, Longmont Housing Authority Resource Specialist. The resource specialist who only works at three Longmont Housing Authority properties. Um, her last mm. day is next Friday. And another one of our resource specialists is just going to be out on leave for much of the next two and a half months. Um, so our whole staff mm. is a little taxed. Mm. Welcome to Senior Services, Ron. We got one new one. We got one new one. So it's like up and down. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to end this on a positive <laughs> note, and I want to do it without tears. A life was saved. Here, three weeks ago. A life was, a life was saved because people care and clients trust and I want you to know that because it's extraordinary and because I went to visit a gentleman yesterday who is here and back in his community because he trusted coming to the senior center he could help and he did thank you I think the only thing we haven't really covered, but the public invite, there's, there's nobody from the public here, so, and the upcoming agenda items and the goals we deferred till next week, so is there any further city liaison report? Yes, just briefly. Um, there hasn't been a council meeting for two weeks, and I haven't gone into the next one. I'm not even sure it's posted yet. Um, there will be a council meeting next Tuesday, but on... January 11th, at the council chambers, that's a Wednesday, there is 
uh, it's going to be a really interesting event. Um, the uh, our our ex executive director of uh, strategic integration, Becky Doyle, who is just a marvelous human being and the smartest person in the city, uh, it went to the Bloomberg City Lab Summit in the Netherlands in November, and she has put together uh, a sort of a report of you know what we can what we can take away from this and apply to Longmont, and we're going to have she's going to have a panel discussion from sustainability and another panel discussion from uh, people in our arts community. So uh, Elliot Moore, the conductor of the Symphony Orchestra is going to be there. I'm um, the, uh, a parks and recreation designer, uh, retired now from the city. You, many, many of you know me, may know Paula Fitzgerald, and uh, a street artist to be yet to be confirmed. Um, you know, so it's going to be a wonderful variety of, of people to meet. And again, 7 p.m. Uh, September, oh, September, February. January 11th on Wednesday. Um, I'd like you to be there, invite all your friends. Um, you can register on the Longmont Public Media web website or on the City Communications website. Um, and that's all. Yeah, it's be down to it. well, it's going to be at the at the council chambers. Council chambers. Yeah. I'd love to. I'm going to be in Maui, however. Oh, oh poor so girl. That's yeah. 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 Tell your friends. <laughs> may, may I ask a question? Yeah. I'm working on the 2022 annual report, um, and they're looking back at 2021 as a list of board highlights from the year and goals for the year. I don't really know how to get this information other than going through old advisory board agendas and minutes. Can I send, maybe not you Beth since you weren't here, but the, the folks who were on the board this year, can I send you what I compile and yes. have you give edits? Because yeah. I feel certain I'm going to miss things. Yeah. Okay. Cool. yeah, that's great. All right, uh, is there any other business? Yeah, I have a hard time naming these sometimes. <laughs> Okay, this is and a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, Art moves. Second. I'll second. Okay, second. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right.